Working as a journalist in the United States is generally a pretty safe profession, even though at times some people may not like what they hear or read in the media. But in Russia, it can cost you your life. The Committee to Protect Journalists in a report out today says that 17 editors, reporters, photographers, columnists and a publisher have been killed since 2000. In only one case have the killers been convicted. The CPJ says critical media coverage is effectively silencing discussion on sensitive subjects like corruption and human rights abuses. And for more on this, we are joined by Joel Simon, who is the executive director of the Committee to Protect Journalists here in New York. Joel, good to see you again. Thanks for having me. Why aren't um, more killers of Russian journalists being brought to justice? Well, in our report, we, ex we examined a number of reasons, conflict of interest, incompetence, um, but the overarching issue is a lack of political will. The, the Putin Medvedev government is not fully committed to investigating these murders, and until they are, we will not see justice. Uh, complicity? It's possible. It cannot be ruled out. A number of the journalists who were killed were looking at national security matters. They were looking at the intersection between corrupt government officials, the mafia, the cr organized crime in Russia. And so there is a lot of concern about possible government complicity that must be examined. How does this affect the quality of information that, that Russians get? Uh, how does it affect their, their democracy and the way that journalists are able to write about important stories around corruption, around uh, crime in Russia? Well, democracy is based on, a, on, on having a citizenry that's fully informed. That's not the case in Russia. You have the, the print media has been marginalized, there's essentially been, been brought under the control of the government, and what's left is a small kind of elite uh, print media that reaches a small sector of the population in Moscow and journalists for that print media that write about national security issues, that write about the conflict in Chechnya and the North Caucasus, that write about human rights issues, they fear for their life. So when you bring out reports like this, is the Russian government paying any attention? They're paying attention, absolutely. Our delegation in Moscow met today with investigators who are looking into these cases. Uh, I talked to our people on the ground there. I understand the meeting was, was somewhat frustrating. But the point is, we're having a dialogue. We're talking to them. They know about our concern. They know about the level of international concern, and we hope to see some progress. Okay, well, let's move on to Cuba and Vietnam, where we're seeing a growing community of bloggers. Right. How are the governments, how are people in those countries reacting to the, the growth of online journalism? Well, it's very interesting. I mean, there's no question that the Internet is, in some ways, harder to control than traditional uh, uh, print media, for example. And there's a new generation of bloggers emerging in both countries. It's larger and more vital in Vietnam. It's smaller and more incipient in Cuba. And in Vietnam, what we're seeing is the government really is getting concerned about this and cracking down. In Cuba, we're keeping a watchful eye. This is really a new phenomenon in Cuba to see how the government responds. All right. Joel, Simon, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me.